Hey guys, welcome to Wade Refresh. I'm Wade and today we're going to be jumping into the world of the matchless kung fu. Whether you're aiming to create a one punch legend or explore a world of your own creation, there's one thing you'll need to become a successful cultivator and that's a lot of money. Whether you prefer to live as an honest and virtuous sage or a deceptive and scheming rogue, I've included methods to help you make bank in your cultivation journey. The first method is one you can do at the start of the game, and that's crafting lamps. To start, you'll need to get your crafting level to beginner, which you can do pretty easily by crafting 10 broken balls. Once you've unlocked lamps, we'll need to gather some wood. Lamps are one of the easiest items in the game to make, and while they might only be worth 5 coins each, the real value come from the crafting insight you get from making them, which are worth 120 each. This is a good method to get yourself some starting capital, but it's not really something I'd recommend long term. As you progress in the game, you'll probably want to use your wood to build houses or maybe even your own sect. For the next option we'll need a lot of farm plots, but before we can craft these, we'll need 8 raw meat and a bonfire to level our cooking. You can get raw meat by looting animals you fight around the map. Experience doesn't carry over, so cook one first and then cook the other seven. Now that we've unlocked them, we'll need 50 wood, 20 stone, and two crafting insight per plot. So it's time to get gathering. Once you've placed your farm plots, you'll need to fill them with licorice and sun key. You can find licorice on most plain tiles and sunki on lava tiles. On my farm, I'm aiming to fill 6 plots with licorice and 5 with sunki. It might take you a bit of time to fill all your farm plots, but once you have them all planted, you'll want to make your way to the nearest clinic. We'll need to increase our relationship with the clinic manager to 200, so we can learn the leechcraft skill. The easiest way to increase your relationship is completing quests or giving them gifts. Don't give them more than 500 coins at a time though, because you'll just be wasting your money. Once your relationship has reached 200, you'll be able to get them to teach you the leechcraft skill. This will allow you to craft potions at a crucible. Once your licorice and sanki have finished, replant them and bring the rest back to your nearest crucible. To start, you'll probably have to make your way back to a clinic, but eventually you'll be able to craft your own. Once you've made your potions, you can sell them for a profit and repeat the cycle every time your crops finish growing. Compared to cutting trees down all day, this is a much more passive approach to making money. While I've shown you some legitimate ways to make business, now why don't I try to show you some of the shadier sides of the game. For this method, you'll need to level up Sneak and Geomancy. To level Sneak, press G and walk around. You'll see the experience bar go up as we move, and each time we gain a level, our range of detection decreases. In this game, Geomancy is your thief skill, and it goes up by picking locks. While you could level this skill by breaking into people's homes, I found it a lot easier to practice on a cage that I own. Once crafted, place it down and select Lock Pick. Once a door opens, put it back in your inventory and place it down again. Repeat the cycle until you get your Geomancy skill to Guru. As I repeat the process, I realized it would be a lot faster if I had more cages, so I crafted a few more. The whole process took me about 18 minutes to complete, but I could have done it faster if I'd started with more cages. And just like that, I finished leveling. Once you become a guru, you won't get any more experience picking locks, so you might as well start making money. With our geomancy skill, you can see that we can steal 5,000 gold worth of items meaning that we can pretty much walk into the shop and empty the place out. Because our sneak skill helps us stay undetected, we can just steal over and over again. This is a great way to make a ton of money, but it couldn't get more morally dubious. The only thing we'll need for this method is a bar for 4. You could use the bar for 2 as well, but the bar for 4 is easier to make. Once you've made your table, you want to place it down in a populated area. A 
And look at that, we've already made some money. But wait, this isn't where our business model ends, no. You see, the untrained cultivator has a tolerance of 15 drunk stacks. So once these merrymakers have reached their limit, I'll whisk them away and relieve them of all their worldly possessions. Now, you could use this in a bunch of different methods, like dealing with bandits. Suppose a gang of bandits moved in next door, and your kung fu is too weak to deal with them. What else could you do than throw them a welcoming party before promptly throwing them in a cage? Now tell me that isn't effective law enforcement. Anyway, these have just been a few money making methods I've used in the matchless kung fu. Make sure to comment your favourite money making method below, and I'll catch you in the next video. If you haven't heard of this game, check it out on Steam. The developers have been releasing a bunch of updates for it recently, so it's definitely worth keeping an eye on. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.